Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of Mord an Mozart, which was shown at the Staatsoper im Theater. The conductor was Max Renner, who was also on the piano. The musical director was David Robert Coleman. The production was done by Elisabeth Stöpler. The set design was done by Annika Halle. The costumes were done by Frank Lichtenberg. The lights were done by Irena Zelke. The dramaturgy was handled by Jens Schrutt and Roman Rega, with music by Nikolai Rimsky-Korsakov from Mozart and Salieri, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart himself, Dmitry Shostakovich, and David Robert Coleman. What more can I say about the relationship between Mozart and Salieri? This was basically one of the most mythical and even most well-known rivalries in the world of composers. In fact, this was very well known that this was also the subject for the film and Broadway play Amadeus. Their rivalry was so mythical that people say that it was Antonio Salieri who did Mozart in, even though some people say that it was false and Mozart died penniless. So this rivalry that these two classical composers had was the stuff of legends. People talk about it, people debate on it, and people make a lot of legends about it to the point where this pretty much is ingrained in pop culture and even ingrained to a lot of music fans. But it's also quite exciting to even listen about this as well as these two were very well-known classical composers, even though Mozart basically trumped Antonio Salieri in terms of fame. And not to mention, this musical theater also has texts from the following people, like Sigmund Freud, Albert Einstein, and Fyodor Dostoevsky, most notably from Freud's letters to Einstein and even from Fyodor Dostoevsky's Grand Inquisitor monologue from the Brothers Komosov. So it's rather interesting to really see all these elements come into play, and it was just such a blast. I basically felt that this experience for me was mainly by chance, and what I got from it was a lot of revelations, a lot of interesting moments, and it was just quite something that made me really intrigued. Now, going into this production, well, it's a minimalist production. And if you put this into film terms, it almost feels like you're watching an existential art film. Basically, there are not a lot of sets being used, save for a small piano, a brown piano, a grand piano that's black, and even, well, just some set designs here and there, and even like a bed and a mannequin, and even an orchestra. But I really do understand the meaning of this production. It's mainly to show all the character relationships in a very psychological level. Not to mention, there are some moments in this production in which there is an actress who is played by Angela Winkler, who is a veteran German actress who's been very well known throughout the 60s and even until today, who also offers some texts from Albert Einstein, Fyodor Dostoevsky, and Sigmund Freud, basically to really show the nature between man and his environment and how society deals with it and even man and God. So there are a lot of heavy topics discussed here, and the story, if you can call it that, is quite non-existent but that doesn't make it bad. It makes it rather intriguing and quite hard to sit through unless you manage to keep yourself open-minded and very focused. So all I can say about this production is that it's rather interesting, and not to mention the costumes are actually really nice to look at as well. So... 
basically what I can say about this production is it's very interesting. It basically focuses on a lot of introspective themes and it's quite fascinating. And now we get on to the singers and the bread and butter of this cast of singers are mainly Marcus Holop as Antonio Salieri and Stefan Rugama as Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Starting with Marcus Holop, I really appreciate and really love this really wonderful German basso. I've never heard of him before as he's a relatively new name for me, but from what I've read, he's been performing in a lot of European opera theaters, specializing in a lot of basso cantante roles, which he's very great at. And just by watching him on, on stage, I was totally blown away. This is a gentleman who is tall, handsome, and quite sexy and very alluring, which is also helped by the fact that he has a very stentorian sound and a very powerful and very, very, well, charismatic stage presence that manages to bring me in and just never makes me leave. Every time he's on stage, I just fall head over heels with this guy. He is such a veteran when it comes to the art of both acting and singing. He does a very great job really showing Salieri as a tortured soul in purgatory. You really get to see that this guy manages to bring out Salieri's personal demons and really let it all out with abandon. Yes, I'm, sur I'm sure some people would say that he might be hammy, but I didn't really mind. He is a pro when it comes to acting out this character and really letting his voice pour out like a huge ocean of sound that poured out of his mouth and his acting was equally as elegant. And then we get Stefan Rugama as Mozart. What more can I say about Herr Rugama? He is a pro when it comes to singing and when it comes to producing really fine lyrical lines. He's great in this role and he's even a great physical actor. Nothing more I can say about this guy except he is absolutely excellent in this part, especially when it comes to his glares, especially when it comes to his few moments of madness, and especially with his chemistry with Marcus Holop as Salieri. And then we have the very, very small role of the soprano who mainly appears in the last moments of this musical theater. Narine Yegian. What more can I say about her? She's a very lovely soprano, and her presence on stage, though quite short, is quite something to be reckoned with. She has a very firm stage presence, which also quite contrasts really well with her ele elegant, light lyric, and very silver-toned voice when she sings in the final moments of this musical theater. And then we get the veteran actress Angela Winkler, who does a lot of the texts from Sigmund Freud, The Grand Inquisitor, and Boys and the Boys Hirte. She is absolutely excellent in whatever she does. She manages to have a nobility and a charisma and an overall demanding presence on stage that leaves me full of anticipation every time she's on stage, which is no surprise because she's been working as an actress for many years, specifically in the 60s, and she's been working her way all the way up to today. She is absolutely charismatic in whatever she does, and she does everything 
very well. And not to mention the musicians with Sophie Heinrich as one of the violinists and even as Albert Einstein and even with Tobias Sturm with the second violin, Sophia Reuter on the viola and Johanna Helm on the cello and even the likes of Adrian Hega on the piano and Valentin Boot on the accordion and even Max Rene on the grand piano. I felt that these musicians did fabulously. Special kudos goes to Sophia Heinrich, who acted the role of Einstein very well. And the conducting done by Maestro Max Rene was very well done. So overall, I really have to say that this piece of musical theater was quite interesting, especially when it came to really great singers a really great actress in the form of Angela Winkler and fine conducting done by Maestro Max Renner. If you haven't seen this yet, then I highly suggest you go check this out. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune in tomorrow where I review Frank Martin's Le Vent Herbe, which will also be shown at the Stadtsopernschild Theater. So until then, good night, everybody.